I think of myself as a somewhat slow developer. I think if I had had the kind of concert success that I'm having now in my 20s, I would not have been ready for it. In the nine years after she graduated from Juilliard, pianist Simona Dinnerstein tried competitions, gave lessons, and played concerts in schools, nursing homes, even prisons, but no big breakthrough. And then she and her husband Jeremy found out that they were going to have their first child. I wanted to learn a major work which would coincide with my pregnancy. And uh, my favorite piece of music for quite a long time had been the Goldberg Variations of Bach, but I had never really felt ready to learn the piece. It's a, a kind of monument of keyboard music. There really is no other standard repertoire piece for piano like it. The other element of it is that it has a very um, legendary recorded history. Um, starting with Wanda Landowska's recording of it, and then Glenn Gould's recordings of it, and Rosalind Turek. And so it's a kind of piece that you don't learn lightly. After my son was born, I started to perform it. And um, gradually, over the next couple of years of performing it, I felt that my interpretation had solidified into something that I felt was, was worth documenting. So on her own, she produced a CD. I think the first day I recorded for about nine hours straight. And I was completely um, in the zone. Simona thought her CD was good when she sent it out to some people in the music world. But she didn't realize how well her Goldberg variations would be received until the offers started coming in. Within a couple of years, she had a high-powered manager, a Carnegie Hall debut, and a deal with Telarc Records. The first week of it coming out, it went to number one on Billboard in the classical category, which was really I mean, just completely <clears throat> astonishing. Basically, my life has changed since that recording came out. And a lot of the recitals are sold out, which is just amazing. Yeah. I didn't know Anya was going to do it. It's exciting. Anya, she just signed up. Oh. And then the two. Henry's? No. Simona's husband, Jeremy Greensmith, teaches fifth grade at a public school in their Brooklyn neighborhood. We've now been married uh, for about 15 years. Uh, we met in London. She'd come over to study with a piano teacher in London who was a really wonderful woman. And I was the lodger, I was the flatmate in the apartment she stayed in. Well, I met my husband, Jeremy, when I was 15 years old. So we have been together now for 20 years. And so everything that's been happening over the past year has been oh. extremely joyful Henry. for both of us no. yes. and also very stressful and challenging. But I think that um, I could not have done this without him. I always hoped um, that she would enjoy this kind of success, but at the same time we had a very happy life too. And I always thought that the important thing for her was to get pleasure from playing music, and she al she has always done that. And it's when we care most that something's going to happen. Nathan, I teach in the school where Adrian goes, this school, so Adrian is just one couple of hallways away, and we walk to school together, and I pick him up at the end of the day, so it works very nicely. My son has always enjoyed improvising on the piano, and um, now for the past month he's been taking piano lessons with a friend of mine. And um, I think that he likes it. I think there's a certain amount of resistance with practicing sometimes, but um, I don't remember enjoying practicing either. So. <laughs> I 
I started taking lessons when I was seven. Before that, we spent a few years living in Rome, in Italy. Uh, my father is an artist, and he had the Prix de Rome, so we were living there because he was at the American Academy in Rome. When we went to Rome, Simona was not quite four, and she took a ballet class where the, the music was live. And there was a pianist who played Chopin during the lessons, and um, I loved the sound of the piano, and that's when I first asked for lessons. But we, were, we didn't have a piano there, and I was quite young. I was, I think, four or five. And my father asked one of the composers at the academy what he thought I should do, and the composer thought I should start with the recorder. And so I took private recorder lessons in Rome, and I think that that was actually a really great way to start to be exposed to music. And um, then when we came here to Brooklyn, um, when I was seven, uh, my grandmother gave me her piano and I started to take piano lessons. And I was really excited about it from the moment that I started. I think when you live with someone who is really into drawing and painting, you, you, you grow up seeing the importance of that. And I feel that she got the influence. And it wasn't because I hit her over the head with it. I never did that. It was just what I felt was important. I think Simona believes in art, that art is important. And I think the thing that I feel the proudest of uh, in terms of her accomplishments is that the way she sees the music is as an artist. It's not really commercial. It's to say something and be poetic. For a very long time, I thought of myself as a student, even when I'd finished studying. I sort of had in my head, and even now it's hard to get those voices out of my head, um, so-and-so would not approve of this, or, you know, don't play it like this because that's not how you do this kind of thing. And it, it's, because of that, it's very hard to break off from your influences. Um, but I would definitely say that one of the reasons why I saw those three days of recording the Goldberg Variations as being a kind of watershed for me was that in those three days it was the first time that I was consciously aware of really following my own voice. And I would say that becoming a mother probably did play a role in that because becoming a parent means taking responsibility for who you are. Ha, ha, ha.